Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Triforce podcast. Woo-hoo! This week, hey. we're on the road, like real podcasts do. But uh, actually, Lewis is visiting my garage this week uh, in Jersey. By on the road, you, you mean off the road in the garage. The car has driven Don't off the road. spoil the image of a roadcast. Road the roadcast. All right, Don't, just let it let it sit. Let the roadcast sit. I I'm, I'm yeah, missing yeah. out. I'm still at home in my uh, what some people have confused for a prison or hospital bedroom because of the bed behind me, which does look like a prison or hospital issue bed. But no, it's my spare you, room. I never thought about it, but actually um, now come to think of it, having seen some of your live streams and stuff, it does look like you're in like a like a nursing home bedroom or something <laughs> yeah. yeah for special people yeah <laughs> i am special special old people who need extra care yeah it, that, it occurs mean. to me now that maybe this bed is the only <laughs> real thing in my life right maybe. and maybe this bed is the is actually real and all this stuff that i'm doing with the internet and having a wife and a family is completely fabricated in my own mind and this bed yeah. is and people keep pe- people pointing out that it's a fake you know, that it's a hospital bed. They're real. And they're trying to point out to me, look, this is all fake. And I'm just like, no, this is real. I really do make stupid videos on the internet for a living. And yeah, this is my life. I'm not being held hostage, but please send help <laughs> please quickly. Send help. My life is like the Truman Show and everybody's watching. But me I don't know it. I don't know it yet. I, I, I this this hospital yet. bed is my one anchor to reality. And I, I reject it. I say, no, it's yeah. not real. Good God. I need to have a lie down. Good God. Lie down so on much like, <laughs> much like the Antiques Roadshow, um, like I said, we're on the road. Uh, we don't have the usual recording setup. So if there's like weird echoes or like uh, technical problems, um, you're just going to have to go somewhere with that. I think, and I deal think they with should go well. straight to Reddit and post a scathing comment about it. I, I think, think so. That yeah. Would be good. I think um, one thing we learned from Reddit this week is that Pyrian is apparently an idiot. <laughs> I'm the idiot. Um, I'm like the, 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 idiot. the idiot. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm known idiot. for. Stupid old P-Flags. What an idiot. I'm... So what, out of the three of us, you're the idiot? No, out of all of us. Out of the entire Yogscast, I'm the idiot. Oh my gosh. I'm the idiot one. Man. Like, that's that's apparently... And then people were like, I thought that was your thing. I was like, I didn't even realize that was my thing. I'm such what, an what, idiot. That's quite so the accomplishment. The I mean, you're grouped in there with, like, idiots like Terps and... All of Hatfield. No, but no, but wasn't there like the, <laughs> wasn't there like the, the, the that tr- that that tr- that classic trifecta of uh, was it Larry Curley and Mo or whatever? One of them was the idiot, one of them was the wise guy, and one of them was the no. The, they were what, just saying what, uh, like it was a it was a thread about what people think of the Yogs cast, like people and how they're the I can't even remember the context actually, but someone said that uh, the Reddit sort of hive mind had decided that I was the idiot. It's not fair. That's is it? not really fair. It's yeah. not fair. I mean, they have to give you a chance, right? What did people think about Lewis, for instance? They said oh. they said he was an even bigger idiot. No, I don't know. Oh, they didn't name man. So. That's they great, didn't say. man. That's what I wanted to hear. Man. Oh my gosh, that would that may have so, been my comment that I let I, me explain yeah. to you the the situation right now. I'm sat in Sips's garage, which I, I keep saying weirdly now because you say, "How do you pronounce it?" Garage. Do you want me to turn the heat on? Are you cold? Or are you okay? So it is chilly. I, I was sneezing okay, hold a moment a ago. You guys hold the fort. Let Are you going to turn, turn the heat yeah. on? Yeah. Let me explain. So I came to see the garage yep. uh, earlier in the year, and it was a proper garage. You know, it had oil, brown oil stains, sort of a stank of engine oil up here. Oh, nice. You know, it was kind of too – it was one of these garages that was too looked too small to fit a car in. But somebody, when they built it, obviously they realized they only had a certain amount of land – and they, yeah. they really they it was, pushed it right to the boundaries, boundaries of this property, didn't they? It was built in the time when every English person owned only a Mini Cooper. That's right. <laughs> and so, you know, and also, if you pulled the Mini Cooper in here, it was almost like you had to push your um, wing mirrors in before you drove it into oh, the garage. Wow. Yeah, you know? and then you had to park with the passenger side right up against the yeah, wall. Yeah, and so the, that whoever was in out. the passenger side yeah. either had to get out before you drove in or, or they had to sort of carefully climb across to the other seat to get yeah. out and then even then when the even then when the driver was getting out he had to be careful not to scrape the door on the wall so yeah it's it's, it's pretty it's pretty titchy but um it's really it's scrubbed up nice i mean in here now it used to have big brown sort of stains on the wall they're still here um it's it's i, I noticed some of them. it was there was some a of them few are patched up a few i'm looking at right now at a snail on the ceiling yeah, that kind of gives you a, a, an idea of how cozy mm. sips has made this place the mascot uh, 
you got to have. I don't it's have any pets. So. Looks, sips, all, all my pets have perished. So now this I, is my some new one. Ants down there. You know, I mean, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't feel like we're inside a professional recording studio. It feels like we're in a garage where Sips has glued some packing materials to the wall. <laughs> yeah. And well, as, is, is as, that, as is rough that soundproofing. Is that what yeah. he's done? It, I said to him yesterday. It's a hundred times better than it was, but it still needs a bit of TLC in here. It, sounds, bit, it sounds great. Like honestly, it I sounds also great. Said, Pyrian, you can probably um, appreciate this. You know, I'm a dad. Yeah, I got two kids. Yep. I don't have a lot of time on my hands. Yeah. No. So when I get down and dirty and do something, it's pretty half-assed. Yep. It's like real it's, half-assed. It's not, the crap out it's of it. It's not getting done a hundred percent. Like yep. you have to weigh things up. You have to prioritize. It's not be done. You 50%. get pretty good at prioritizing. Yeah. So really good. All of these like things that you know your typical millennial would start to complain about um, <laughs> don't affect me because I'm a hardcore dad. Yeah. So I'm just like whatever. You know, a couple brown stains. I can deal with that. Absolutely. A little snail who's Do you even know what these dead. brown stains are? That snail is totally dead. What is what are those brown stains over there? Stuck to the ceiling now. I don't know. It's like I think it's like glue from the roof or something okay. that's just like started to come through. Yeah. But, you know, there's just like there's little things like that. But I mean, imagine having a workshop in your garage, you know? That would I'm be actually so looking sweet. at a picture um of Fallout 4 right now. You know like that iconic picture of the yeah. power armor sitting inside the garage. Looks a bit rusty. There's a bit junk everywhere and stuff, but still looks like a kind of cool place to live and work. Yeah, my garage is not really like that, but I like to think that it is like. Nice. Yeah, it's, it it does remind me of that. It reminds yeah. me of this sort of area that you would have the garage door open and you you get a workbench there and you saw some stuff and yeah. you hammer some stuff together instead of the dog just put like a dead snail on the ceiling instead <laughs> and you're some halfway there suspicious stains it here looks and there. very alive to me <laughs> or else it wouldn't still there. be stuck on there would it yeah um do you know what, so it, comes, yeah, I mean, the, what it comes down to is and the, I, I am the what? same way i'll, I'll half ass any job in this house at the drop of not at the drop of a hat but maybe three days after you've dropped the hat i'll get round to it right so okay. yeah yeah uh, the point is this i i've already got a, a mate for life in my wife and we've got the kids and everything i don't need to impress anybody by having a spotless house with everything squared away and and exactly. i'm very timely you, you know you just accept me as the dad i am now not the dad you want me to be i, I tell my kids yeah. that daily when i disappoint them yeah me too this is Mine what really daddy is all right this is the yeah. daddy you've got deal with that all right that's right that's exactly right my wife I mean, doesn't amen. appreciate it, but she should. Deal with she, this. She should. This is Deal it. with that. <laughs> I, I agree. I, I get exactly where you're coming from. Yeah. But no, it's, um, it's a decent dad garage. It does the job for now. I agree with Lewis. Maybe it could use like a little bit of extra work sort of thing. But much like your old folks home that you record <laughs> from, you know, sometimes you just think, fuck it. I'm happy with this. Yeah. You know, I don't give a shit with I'm anyone else. I'm happy with this thinks. cast iron bed frame with stains from where the last person died on it. You know, it's old cool. ass toys like yeah. on shelves behind me and like, you know, creepy clown, frilly curtains costume, that we don't want up. in the actual house anymore that we've just put in this well, room. Well, this used yeah. to be the kids' room. So there's a, there's a Rapunzel poster and a ballerina Barbie poster on the wall. And my nice. my daughter said to me, "We really should the take those down." The eyes have been scratched out. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's dark. It's like some prison hospital it's kind of dark, mental yeah. asylum shit. Yeah. Jesus. Sorry, hey, your daughter was telling you what she wanted the posters back. Yeah, and I said, "Well, I'll well, get them later." And she was like, "Okay, well, get them later." Yeah. How long would it take to take the posters down off the wall? They're not nailed on, are no, they? They're just blue tack. But they're like, I the fusty nails won't come out of the <laughs> eyes, Daddy. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> okay. Hey, so listen, on the subject of daddery, yeah. and you have two girls, right? I do, yeah, so yeah. was was Frozen like a big thing in your household? Was. It persists. Is, it persists, my friend. It's crazy, isn't it? I mean, I've got a four-year-old son who has recently discovered the magic of Frozen. Yeah. But he knows that it's like kind of like a forbidden pleasure almost. Right. Like he knows that he shouldn't really be, you know, he's not like the, the target demographic. <laughs> right. But he likes the songs and stuff. And then and he sort of says like, he's I, like four. I like Olaf. Like that's that's yeah. my favorite guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's like the, the sort of like neutral cartoony. Ugh. Snowman, snowman guy he's yeah. the, um, the worst character in the film he's not funny he's pretty bad. his song he's sucks not. i hate i yeah. hate the voice acting i hate yeah I, oh, my kids freaking love who's him. uh 
who's his favorite Star Wars character though? His he he tends more towards bad guys, right? Kylo so Ren. He like, he no, well, he hasn't seen Force Awakens because it's not out on. I think it's out on Blu-ray today. Actually, I think it's released today, like okay. uh, the day that we're recording this. At least in the U.S., I think it comes out today. Um, so he'll finally get a chance to see it. I offered to take him to the movie theater, uh, but he said he was worried that it was going to be too loud oh, and he wow. didn't want to go. So I was he, like, okay, fine. He sounds fine, a lot wait. like my four-year-old. She's kind of like <laughs> that as well. It's kind of sweet. <laughs> he said, I'll wait for it to come on Netflix. So I said, okay, fine. That's, <laughs> that's cool. We'll do that. So, um, yeah. So he likes Darth Vader a lot. You know, he like he he walks around the house and pretends that he's Darth Vader. And when he's not pretending that he's Darth Vader, he likes to pretend that he's a stormtrooper. Oh, he nice. really likes stormtroopers. He really likes Bowser from Mario more oh, than wow. like any of the other characters. Like, yeah, like True. he just... So I don't know, like, does that mean he's going to be a serial killer when he grows up? Yep. Who knows? But, you know, I guess somebody's got to like the bad guy, right? So Someone's got to like him, yeah. Someone's got to like him. There's no, I mean, they're cool, though. Yeah, I mean, the Dark thing Vader's is... Darth pretty cool. He is cool. He, he looks cool. Yeah. He he has a lot of cool lines. And this is the other yeah. thing about the bad guys in the movies, is everybody listens to the bad guy, right? You think yeah. about kids are used to, no, nobody listens to him. Oh, uh, shut up. You can't have that. Just be quiet. Go to your room. Do this. Do that. Darth Vader walks into the room and everybody's like, oh, ooh. so I think kids are role playing as someone with authority. I think they they must it must yeah. be quite original. The heroes are always like some schmuck think, who lives in a barn yeah. and nobody I think you're cares onto about something. You know? Definitely. Like he was in here yesterday going through daddy's toys, right? Which are yeah. like your World of Which Warcraft. Which I was like, I was sweating, like and stuff. stressing out. You were really stressed that you were like, like oh, no. well, no, better not touch no, no. daddy's toys. Like trying daddy's to toys. deflect and everything. Anyway, he's got, he, he found like a thrall um, out of World of Warcraft. Right. And he was, he was only interested in thrall if he was a bad guy, oh, basically. Wow. So he's like, is he a bad guy? And we're like, um... Oh. And he was he was always like putting it down, and then I said, "Yeah, yeah, he's a bad guy. He's a bad guy." And he was like, "Oh, I'm keeping it. I'm taking it." Yeah. He, it's, um, <laughs> it's just it's strange, it's wasn't good, it? Yeah. Well, no. I mean, it's just just the way, just the stuff that he likes or whatever. But you know, I mean, after that happened, we went inside, and Lewis like threw him around the living room and almost broke his neck like multiple times. Wow. Yeah. So that was pretty cool too. Yeah. I was just so, chucking him around. Just chucking him around. He's, the kids are they bounce. They do they, bounce. Yeah, they bounce they do. so except, much. Except for when they break their spines and then <laughs> he's are, very flexible yeah i was throwing him around you, you much hope. less hard than like last time i was here with chucking him around because he <laughs> yeah, was lighter last time right yeah, he was much lighter he's last like time, um, yeah. he's grown a he's little like bit a last foot time. taller yeah so like, yeah it's gonna yeah. be gonna be taller than you soon it's, damn it's been fun lewis has had a real insight into the world of dance and uh kids honestly the, the, the insight is i'm sitting in the kitchen okay and first you know and and uh your son just is like Oh, I need to poo. So he just grabs the potty, pulls his trousers down <laughs> right in the middle, right in the middle of the kitchen, like so proud. It's like he's suddenly completely naked, and I'm like, blah. And then, yeah. and so he just starts to poo, and then I turn around, and the baby is like basically naked as well because she's like having a nappy changed. I'm like caught between two naked children. Well, I've just I've just arrived, and man, I'm like, that's oh, that's what kids just, do, though. They're just you know. It, it, is, so it no, is a culture shock thing. If you're not used to it, it is a culture kids, shock. Like, I, I've been in the same boat where I have friends over who are not familiar with children and and their ways. And yeah, it is, it, when the, when your kid walks out half naked with poop all over their butt crack, it's like, I can't wipe my bottom. I'm just like, all right, yep, problem to be solved. No problem. And my, Easy. My friends are I know like, how to deal with this one. Oh my I've, God. Done this, I've done this before. <laughs> Far from everywhere. Yeah. I know. Once you smell shit like a couple hundred times, you don't really care yeah, anymore. Yeah, who cares? Like, whatever. It's just a shit. Everybody's yeah. always like, "Oh, I have to change nappies." You get, you get, you're a veteran after two weeks of changing. To be a four year old, you can do it. You can do it while you're asleep. Pretty I've done much. it on like, to- on the on the very small window shelf in the bathroom of a Chinese restaurant. Okay, that was the weirdest I, yeah. place I've I ever changed. I think that I think they might just be trolling us though. You know, because you know, it, imagine if you could just take your trousers down anywhere. You know, imagine if you could get away with that. I you can. can. We've we've can. we've lost that as a society. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've be, we've tried to become so civilized, but there was a time where people would just you know lift their loincloths and just you know poop in a lake or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> if you get caught lake. doing that now. If you get caught, <laughs> caught pooping in doing a lake. that now, forget it. You're you're dead. You're That's like it. not only are you like defecating in public, but you're like you're also sort of like probably considered polluting some sort of weird pervert or like pollution. some sort of pedophile or whatever because. Yeah. You know, you did a poop somewhere. Like, 
We've gone crazy. Be all over Twitter. Yeah, it'd be on Reddit. People will be like Snapchatting each other about it. I, saw, yeah. I, I, I oh, was, I uh, when I was living stuff. in Bournemouth, there was a, a homeless woman that lived in uh, Westbourne, which was the part of Bournemouth I lived in. And she would get very drunk by about two o'clock in the afternoon and walk around the, the, the town just shouting at people. And because it was a town, like that part of Bournemouth is mainly old people. Like I know that sounds stupid coming from someone in Bournemouth, but genuinely this was like old people central Westbourne. And she was walking around near Waitrose and she was walking across by the car park and she just was shouting and screaming. She threw her bottle against the wall. She was in her 60s, so it was quite shocking in itself. And then she just dropped. She was wearing these big, heavy brown sort of trousers. They were, looked like they were made out of sack cloth. And she just squatted nice. in the middle of the road and did a massive wee. And I must have been about oh. 11 or 12 years old. And I was on my own on the way to the shop. And I was absolutely terrified at seeing an adult peeing in the street and shouting drunkenly. I'd never seen anything like it. So I think they, it's, like, it's shocking yeah, to people. That- that kind of shit, like mm. it, it wrecks you though. Like that, that kind of trauma when you witness something so out of the blue like that when you're young. Yeah, you know, like a couple years down the line, it's like today a man has been arrested and we found that he had the largest collection of golden shower pornographic material we've <laughs> ever seen. It was the biggest haul for the Bournemouth Police Department <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah, that'll oh, be me. Man. That'll be me. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be it me. was it was bizarre. It really was bizarre. It's amazing how sort of you slowly learn stuff that is wrong, though, right? Because I wore my shoes in your lounge yesterday because I forgot something in there, so I went to grab it with my shoes on, and your son was just shocked. It was like I'd it was like I'd done the most offensive thing ever. You know, he is fine just pulling his pants down and doing a poo right in front of me. But if I walk in the lounge with oh, my man. shoes on, yeah, well, he told on you too. Remember I know he when totally you were like, told "Don't don't tell was, mummy that I, I did like, that," and he was like, "Oh, okay, I won't tell." And then literally he, five minutes. After five, you left. Yeah, he was like, Lewis was in the lounge with his shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. man. oh, man. So, the way it goes. Kids, great, kids great are rats. They will rat they at the drop of a fucking hat. I have to tell my kids constantly, like, don't rat on each other. Like, they'll come up and don't say, snitch. she did this. I'm like, don't rat on your sister. What kind of loyal loyalty is that? What kind of family member? In this house, we don't rat on our family. We got the rule <laughs> of omerta in this house. You understand me? You want to be sleeping with the fishes? <laughs> I don't want to sleep with the fish the tank again, daddy. I did it two times, daddy, because my name is Jenny two times. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man yeah well the thing is kids are like uh, under constant threat though right it's like they're always torn between you know should i appeal to this person who threatens me constantly to have like my toys taken away yeah, or that we're not going to go get, get ice cream or whatever or should i side with the guy that comes over like once every six months throws me around uh Gets offended by me shitting in the kitchen <laughs> on my potty and whatever. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I can see like the appeal of of ratting people out because you want you want to get on onto the good side of the people. That, yeah, that's a good you know, point. Yeah, are are like constantly it's sort true. of threatening to to you know impact you know, you your know uh, Lu- Louis, Louis C.K. does a bit about lying. And when kids discover lying and try to tell them not to lie, but also you know, like understanding that it is actually to them a, an incredibly valuable life skill. Like he, he says to his daughter, did you eat the chocolate? Did you, where's all that chocolate? Go? Did you eat it? And she's thinking, oh, my God. And, and he was saying that to kids being in trouble with their parents is like the worst thing in the world. It's, it's, it's terrifying to them. So they just yeah. go, no. And you go, okay then, good girl, and walk away. And they think, oh my God, this is this power is unbelievable. So my my kids, my youngest lies constantly now, like the the four year old. The, the seven year old not so much, but the four year old lies constantly because she's, she's like figuring you, it out. You've encouraged it though. No, too. I just you say seem, to her like you seem to you seem, she's, you seem to be very proud of the fact that she lies constantly. No, I, mean, it, I got a liar. It's yeah, I got a liar, liar. folks. Very proud. She got a gold certificate <laughs> at school. My daughter lies so well, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> she could bluff like the best of them. Yeah. Oh, we took man. her to Vegas. Yeah. Oh. They go through a bit of a phase though. My four year old's the same where it's not it's like it's innocent stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like you know, it's just really innocent stuff that they lie about. But because they're figuring out and testing boundaries and, and stuff like that. Like she's they, a she's a just... horrible liar as well. She'll get like no and turn her eyes to the side. <laughs> like a like a supervillain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. Kids are like mini supervillains in yeah. a lot of ways, aren't they? But the it's most crazy. incompetent, least well-equipped supervillains that you've ever met. Well, I, f- I, I mean, having watched The Force Awakens, I feel like Kylo Ren is like that. I feel like I was going to say before when we were talking about like, you know, Darth Vader, the contrast between a bad guy like Darth Vader compared to somebody like Kylo Ren. You know, yeah. Darth Vader walks into a room, says, why isn't the Death Star built? Somebody starts like stuttering and jabbering on about how they didn't have enough resources. Boom. That guy is choked to death. He's, <laughs> he's dead. You know, if that was Kylo Ren, Kylo Ren would have been like pacing around, sweating, like worrying, and then like having like a little hissy fit, you know, doing some sort of like backflip to try to impress everybody and then crying because he doesn't like his dad and stuff. And like, I don't know, maybe like Kylo Ren is the bad guy millennials deserve. Yeah, he's the millennial <laughs> bad guy. You're right. A hundred percent. I feel like I feel like he is a little bit. But yeah, no, I, mean, I think he having, is. I did enjoy the movie, though. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I can't wait for my son to see it because he really likes like the the effects, right? Like, because he's he's like a new age kid, right? You know, like I tried to play Mario Maker with him, and he doesn't like the old eight bit Mario levels. He's like, Dad, put the better one on. So you have to put like the fan- fancy schmancy, you know, thirty two bit Mario Ugh. or whatever it is, <laughs> you know, with the even though it's the same thing, it's just like a 2D platformer Mario. Yeah. He just like is has better animations and, and all that kind of Have stuff. You, has has, has he seen uh, Mario Galaxy, Super Mario Galaxy? No. Well, I mean, I got it. But because I got it on the Wii U, we didn't have a, like a, a like an old school Wii remote. Right. So I went and bought that. But then it didn't come with like the boxing thing. So Aww. like, oh, man, it's just I'm not. I'm not kidding. That, fucking... that game, Super Mario Galaxy, the first one, I actually put, finished that game. Like I very rarely do that. I, I thought it was nice. a beautiful game. It was absolutely brilliant. And I think the kids Shit. will like it. It is hard as balls, but it's uh, it's actually it's not that hard, but it's, it's got I some tough bits. You just want to play it yourself. Right, hips. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why you buy toys for your kids, right? Like, pretty much. Like, hey, hey, I bought you a new car, even though you're four. <laughs> Mind if I drive it for a bit? <laughs> I bought you, know? you a shotgun. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bought you a bowling ball yeah, with my name on it. Yeah. The thing is, it's a bit weird because you really want him to be into like Mario, but he doesn't really want to play Mario. He, he doesn't. He wants no. to run around and be a, be a dinosaur or whatever, and yeah. so. And then it's when kind he... of strange dynamics. I remember when I was a kid, I was desperate to get like a, a, an N64 and play Mario. I was desperate. To, that's all I wanted to do. But he's not quite old enough yet to no. want to do that. You so you're trying like... to like trick him into playing Mario. It's really weird. It is. Because yeah. normally parents would be the opposite. They'd be like, no, 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 stop playing Mario. Come on, let's go outside. But he wants to be outside. I'm going to be like that overbearing sports dad, but with video games. But maybe it's going to work, right? Maybe if he, <laughs> maybe because it's always the way, right, where you're going to want him to play video games so much that he's never going to play video games and he's going to have like a super productive life. But and, like, I see it really as well a win-win, himself. though, because if he does get into video games, cool. You know, like we can hang out a lot together and play video games. Right, right. If he doesn't, cool he'll probably amount to something yeah you know <laughs> so it's like either way it like works out pretty even good way, either way it's fine yeah yeah you can't control it he can't just, no just it's happens. one of those things it just happens my, he likes it enough but my, he my doesn't have love games they love them yeah he he if he plays a mario level and he dies straight away which like he, he inevitably does He's just like, that's it. I'm done. Dad, you do it. You you finish it. Like, yeah, they don't like seems- the challenge. My my kids, my my eldest is just starting to get into Minecraft after I bought her that Minecraft magazine, hoping that would be the end of it. Like, she could just read about it. But then I put, yeah. I because when I got the new machine, I put the old machine downstairs as a sort of the house machine because no one's allowed to touch this one apart from me, obviously. So they're downstairs. She's playing Minecraft the other day, and I said, I want you to explore it yourself. You've got your massive Minecraft book you've read like 20 times. You talk about it nonstop. Here's your chance. Just go nuts. Do whatever you want. Play Minecraft. So she's playing it for like five minutes and she can't put this block down or something. And I can hear her getting angry. She's like punching the keyboard and she's like slapping (laughs) the mouse down and she's like shaking the monitor. And I'm like, she she may yet discover (laughs) that gaming really is this frustrating. But I I feel that that rage is actually to me... That makes that lets me know that she's really engaging with the game. Like she's sure she wasn't playing in. Dark Souls uh, three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's how I. It could have been I worse though. You could have gone down after five minutes, and she's just like not playing Minecraft. She's just sitting there watching Stampy instead. Oh something. god! Oh, she's oh, built a giant god. wooden penis in Minecraft, like everybody does. She's built like a massive cock. I'm like, what are you doing? That's kind. Of, 
That's kind of the first thing that you do in, in any game, yeah. any sort of creative game, right? Yeah. That's yeah, pretty intuitive. Yeah. That's she's, my fear. She's, she's, <laughs> what? It's my greatest fear. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, 25 minutes of dad chat is probably enough. Let's okay. talk about games. All right, Let's all right. talk about No, what no, no. Games... I, I want to talk about stuff that's happened this week. Like, what's, like well, what, have we, what have you been up to this week? Have you done anything? Because it's, it's been two weeks since we did a podcast, right? Oh, so yeah, that's right. Yeah, last well, week, we couldn't do one. We put out an archive. Some people were, like, complaining about it, but, pff, like, who cares? Em. Shut up. Um, if you don't like it... I'm not with these two guys. I, I think you'd, good <laughs> for you. You've got opinions and they matter. Yeah. And voice them as much good, as you good like for you, on all the social media guy. I never read. Uh, so I went to a couple of events. I went to Insomnia. I went to Gadget Show. Um, they were amazing. I met loads and loads of fans. Oh, yeah. You do, You didn't end up going to anything to GP Flex because England was supposed to be... Yeah, England was meant to be Easter weekend and then... But it got um, cancelled. Yeah, with problems with the sponsorship and everything and it had to fall through. It was, it was a real I shame. I didn't actually get to see any of Insomnia, but I'm pretty pretty sure I know what it's what kind of stuff's there. You know, maybe you get to play on the HTC Vive or whatever. Have you guys mucked around with the Vive, the VR? Have we talked about that before on the podcast? I, I tried an Oculus Rift like a couple of years ago. Right. I th- I think I tried it at Insomnia actually, one of the Insomnia events, and I played Minecraft, and it was okay. I've but I've, I've used the vibe a lot. a lot. I've used the vibe yeah. a lot because when I I went to for when I was at TI uh, four, they were just starting to develop it, and they were actually they were some way in, but it wasn't like a public project that they uh, they definitely weren't partnered with HTC at that point. And it was a guy called Doug Church, who's who is a gaming legend. I subsequently found out. I just knew him as Doug. But if you look up his credits, he's like any any good game over the last like twenty years. He's probably either knows the people involved or has had a hand in it. It's just a ridiculous right. legacy. Wow. And I was chatting to him. He's a really lovely guy. And we he gave me a demo on the Vive. And this was before they had controllers and it was QR codes glued to the walls and everything like that. So it was kind of very basic. And then I was very excited even just then because I was like, this is going to be something unbelievable. Like I couldn't believe how good it was and then i went back for ti5 and he was like you got to come back and try the new model i was like okay how much can it have changed and it was like it is now it's practically the very same similar to the release model with the controllers like prototype versions and everything and it just had these little sensors and everything and it it blew my mind it was just so good really good so I saw a GIF on um twitter of some dude wait 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 wait. let's just it's gif come on but this is we're not a no, we're not a no. GIF. The guy who I don't the guy care who made what it the guy actually says. I don't care what he it says. GIF. It's, a, it's graphical interchange interface yeah. format. So it's graphical, it's GIF. GIF. I, he's wrong. I, fuck that guy, he's wrong. He's trolling the guy he who just said, wanted to start the some guy shit. Made it, though. He made it. I don't care. It's like it's like saying wave or wav. It's Listen, wow. if Notch came along and said to you, Oh, it's actually pronounced Mahinecraft. You yeah. wouldn't like say, oh yeah, I'm gonna pronounce it Mahinecraft from now on. Yeah. Would you? Because he's a dick. Well, I just pronounce it the way I want to. Okay. I don't see why like I have no, to pronounce it. No, you don't. It. You're pronouncing it yeah. the way that he told you to. And who's yeah, that? Yeah, you're guy? doing what he said. You're the, you're following the man. Well, no, actually, this was something I found out after the fact. Oh, like the really? first time I'd ever seen the um the like thing. Hermione was, like, out of Harry Potter. Her, 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 Hermione. Yeah. Hermione. What, how do you actually pronounce Hermione. it? Hermione. Hermione. <laughs> and Hagrid. And Hag- Hagrid. That's right. They're the characters, aren't they? Have you ever watched any Harry Potter stuff, v I believe it's pronounced Harry Pooter. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's P- the porn Harry version. Harry Pootie, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I've watched um, it. I've watched them all. Mrs. F is a big fan. Um, it's okay. I don't really... I can't believe you're referring to them as if as if the films were the things that you would have came first. I can't believe you're talking about Harry Potter as if have you watched it? It's not. A, it was a series of books. They were great books. The films that don't do it any justice. M- Mrs. F there read the like, books. I didn't read the books. I watched the films because I don't want to read kids' books. No offense. Re- the books I, are yeah. so good. The films Straight are kids' up. films. The films are dumped down for the, the kids. The books are kids' books. Let's the face books are great. Like they're young one word books. per page. They're like, good. The writing is huge. <laughs> in those books. I've, I mean, I've read parts of it, and it's just not very well written. Like it's just. I mean, of, I did read them when I was younger, but not that much younger. I, I, what do you mean? It's not well written. It's fantastically written. No, it's I really. She, it's a modern masterpiece. It's quite. I quite think that repetitious. it's written in very I, modern English. It's very well. It's very. It's a joy eh, to read Harry Potter books, meh. and I suggest that you you read them. If Is you it haven't. J.K. Rowling or J.K. Rowling? Good question. Ruling. I say Jif. You say Gif. Let's all call her Rowling. 
Let's yeah. all call the whole thing off. Ruling. Boop. <laughs> so, uh, so Insomnia was good. The HTC Vive is amazing. Yeah. Uh, I went to the Gadget Show, which was full of crap. And I was telling Sips about some of it yesterday. I actually got to go around and walk around the Gadget Show because we got there an hour early. So me and Shin walked around and looked at all the junk that people were, were selling. And oh, man. It was a lot of Wi-Fi enabled household stuff, right? Like Wi-Fi light bulbs, Wi-Fi door locks and handles wi-fi balls for your junk. cats yeah and and, a, and these a, cats can play with these balls and they're wi-fi enabled and you right. can attach any device to them so there's like this 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 sort of a ball and it was the idea really was that i guess like when you're at work you you look you can measure how fit your cat is by how much he plays with the, with the ball as if there's not like visual indicators on how fit your cat is like I mean, one but how the thing fat is, they are in general who two, gives a fuck about a cat how much like, they hate you and, even like, if you own a cat the house. You, you, if you're leaving him at home all day clearly you don't give a shit about that cat in the first place like who fucking cares how much exercise he's getting yeah i guess like if you've got if you've got your cat locked in oh, look, i'm not a cat fan i'm not a cat Me owner neither. I don't know anything, but maybe look. Maybe we're giving this guy a lot of promotion. Maybe it's a great product. You know, the cat ball, the i the i fit cat ball. It's the Go dumbest, ahead and buy the it. dumbest idea I've ever heard. It's a dumb idea. <laughs> it's a dumb idea. Thank you. Anyway, and I saw there was loads of other crap on sale, and it yeah. blew my mind. Like how many things to do with like Apple Watch charging case, like a fancy leather case that charges your Apple Watch because you know you can't, uh, or you have to like have your arm like dangling out of your bed at night to like charge it. So it's some bullshit. Man, no offense to Catball guy, but he is like quite typically, I think, the guy that goes on Dragon's Den, values his business at a million pounds in the first <laughs> year, and then Duncan Bannatyne gets really fucking mad at him, and then Peter Jones gets like even more mad at him. And Theoprophetus like spits on him and stuff, and then he's like, "Well, I just it was always my and then dream the woman from says, when I was a I little... love cats. <laughs> yeah. I have ten cats. These cats would love this product. This I'm in. <laughs> I'm, I'm in. gonna I'm gonna invest. My cats love balls. My <laughs> cats love to play with balls. They fucking love to play with balls. Oh my god. Uh, so that the cat ball, and there was all sorts of other crap like fitness. There's all sorts of fitness crap. Because um, it's all about the the, the 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 Apple, not the Apple Watch, but the other fit, the fit bands, fitness bands, fitness fucking rings you can put on your cock, and like they they measure how much girthy and sex you have, how much thrust. It's ridiculous. Kilojoules of thrust you can produce. There was like there was it was like there were a lot of exercise stuff for the people, the, the chronically lazy, right? Yeah. Like there's a lot of stuff that's like you can get fit if you just stand on this ball. Make the perfect cup of coffee. With Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys, do you guys uh, want to hear something about pets? Uh, pets whoa, in the whoa, UK. Hey, ho- hang on one second, though. I, I was it, rudely interrupted, actually, about the whole GIF, GIF thing. Uh. I wanted to say about the HTC Vive. I saw an animated image of a man sitting on like a subway with one of these Vives attached to his face. Um, and it was hooked up to like a controller that was on his phone or something. And he was like flailing around and like whipping his head all over the place. And there's people sitting next to him and it looked really antisocial. Like, is this what we have to look forward to? Yeah, I'm afraid so. That's a good point. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm, I've been on my own in Jersey. Okay. Uh, for the last <laughs> couple of so nights. Lonely. Right. <laughs> and I don't normally go to places on my own. So I'm not really quite very used to it. But I have been in I, I went I've been eating out and like going to a couple of restaurants and stuff on my own. And it's quite astonishing to see how many people so so I went into this this place and it was full up, but there was a queue of people and there were like three people waiting in front of me. And they were all like hunched over, looked like staring at their phones. And I looked around this place this bar and they were just everyone was just on their phones like like 40 50 year old people mostly yeah. like not not young people anymore it's just everyone was sucked into their phones and it, and I, it was kind of like the new norm so yeah i think that's what we're in for sips we're in for this world where everyone's walking around with visors on like you know having like some sort of playing like almost like walking to work right yeah will be this 3d game it'll be like mario right yeah. and so you'll be da, 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 yeah. you'll come it'll out of your house like, da, da, like... da, 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 and people will be like collecting a coin ding yeah. do you know what I mean? they'll be like fucking it'll be somehow tied into like eve online like if you want to level up your new <laughs> ability faster 
You need to uh, Take turn this app steps. on before you start walking to work in virtual reality to, yeah. to speed it up. And or... then what will happen is initially, okay, it'll be like the, the Wii Fit, right? Initially, everyone will be like, yeah, I'm going to get fit. I'm going to run around and jump around and stuff. And they, like, they do all this stuff. And then slowly people learn that they can just like slouch back on their sofa and like waggle it like in their wrist or whatever. And, like, and it'll, it'll fake them fake them doing like a mile of run you know so instead yeah, of doing yeah. a mile run for real they'll just be on the sofa like basically like wanking <laughs> with the Wii controller man I'm a bit conscious now because like you know <laughs> Lewis is over here visiting I don't want people to think I'm a bad host because he's so lonely and he has to go do stuff on his own but no, the, no, no, the, no, no. the fact of the matter is is that it's a choice when, when he goes somewhere to eat dinner right like I have two kids that's like meltdown hour for me yeah from like about Five o'clock until be ten o'clock at hour. night. Like I have two kids to put to bed who really do not want to go to bed or do anything no. that I tell them to between those five hours. So it's like really hard to get out of the house and do stuff. No, I'm delighted to. to I'm, I'm, not, I'm having a great I'm time. Not, I'm not, not, not complaining. You. I'm not judging you, dude. I, I'm not no, complaining I know at you're all. Not, yeah. But but but, but yeah, I think that is the way we're going, right? It's going to be that people are just in their own little. It's already that way, you know. You already see people walking down the street, just being like, "Hey, yeah, blah blah,", blah just talking to themselves like some fucking nutcase. Oh, yeah, those are the worst you know? with their Bluetooth headsets. Yeah, and their eyes are like yeah, glazed buy, over. Buy low, sell high. Who the fuck are you yeah, talking yeah, make, to? Make sure you talk to Alice about that because she's she's bringing the cookies. So make sure you talk <laughs> to Alice because because uh, otherwise we're not going to have any cookies. We need to make what sure are we going to all... do without the cookies? Uh, uh, make sure you talk to Janine. Remember, you know Janine, <laughs> Janine. over. She, because Janine's gonna bring the, the other thing, the plates. So if you got, do you know what I mean? They're literally yelling as they walk down the road like some insane person. Yeah, and that's where we're going. It's only gonna get worse. It's gonna be bad. Yeah, it's gonna get bad. And people always think they can incentivize themselves to do stuff like, like get fit, right? Yeah. Via doing some dumb shit. Well, this came about with the Wii. I don't know if you remember. It was like, Wii exercise. You want to sit at home and play video games all day? Now you can just flail around your living room with this workout pad that nobody fucking used yeah, ever. Yeah, it's a little bit like the brain training on um, the, the iOS, on the, on the DS, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I got that, actually. There's like, like absolutely that. no evidence whatsoever that it actually helps with anything. No. But they will say, you will we'll get smarter if you play this it stupid puzzle game. It makes you feel game. like a fucking idiot. That's what it does. It, Every oh. day, you, you subject yourself to that and you're like, fuck, I'm stupid. Like, how come I can't do these puzzles? <laughs> I, don't think that's, I don't think that's what it's supposed to do. Yeah. I think it's supposed to make you feel like, you know, you're not wasting your time playing games, but Crazy. actually you totally are. Do you know what, do you know what I think it is? I, w- I was actually thinking about this the other day about people and reality. And I think that most people don't believe that everything that's happening outside of their body is actually real, right? I think to most people, the reason most people are very self-centered is because to them, if you think about it, reality is a very confusing and weird place. You're hundred percent correct. Stuff is just happening. You don't have much control over it. And for, throughout history, people have seen stuff and just gone like, "What the fuck is that?" And they come up with an explanation <laughs> for it in their head that makes no sense. Like chemtrails, for instance, or there's a weird noise in the sky, so it's some kind of government project, or they're putting stuff in the water. This is people's. Um, th- the world is flat. It's all a lie. You know, nobody believes anything, and the reason for that is because they all think that their reality is the only one true reality. So escaping yeah. from this false reality we live in to a virtual reality where you can shape it, you can do whatever you want. It's just you understand it. It's got simple rules. You can actually do well in it. People yeah. are going to be all I, over that. I think that I think the really good example of that is driving. Right when you get in, when you get into a car and you start driving. It feels like you're playing, to me, it feels sometimes like I'm playing a video game. Yeah. You sort of get really detached from the fact that you're driving around a one ton hunk of metal. Yeah, it's on basically fucking, like a cruise missile. That, that is powered careful. by like million year old dead dinosaur. Yeah. Like it, 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 it is probably the weirdest thing that we let everybody do. Yeah, and, yeah. It's, and it, is, it is incredibly... I mean, dangerous, really, when you think about how people, how blase people are about it. But even worse is now games like GTA Five and stuff like that. You, you know, sometimes I get into my car and I'm like driving along. And I'm like, fuck, I would love to just like bash into those trash cans. And stuff. <laughs> but like, I know I shouldn't. But like, I've done it so many times in the game that I'm like, I wonder if anyone would even notice. Like, maybe it would be like one of those things, you know, like the time like um, Father Ted kicked. Bishop Brennan up the arse, you know, like he was not expecting <laughs> He was so it. shocked. He was so he, shocked. He was that, in denial. Yeah, he was in it. denial for the longest He just couldn't believe that it had time. happened. And I feel like if I ran over somebody's trash cans, 
uh, with my car, just sent like paper and stuff flying everywhere, listening to like some West Coast classics at the same time. Mm. That would be fine. You know, I'd probably get away with it, but I'd feel bad. I got it. I got in big trouble for trying to do stunt jumps over the bridges around Twickenham. It's just. It's... <laughs> Doesn't doesn't work out. <laughs> well, in your like family car, in your like big old no, I knocked, knocked car. the guy off his moped. Just grabbed it. I was off over the bridge, leaping over. You know, because there's there's a ramp, and if you catch it just right, you can clear the river and smash into a cafe. But it's cool. You just respawn. That's what I thought anyway. But it doesn't work out. I played. A Are we talking about real life? What? <laughs> when did you knock a guy off the moped? Was that in the game? <laughs> it's just GTA. Uh, oh, thank God. Yeah, it's all right. That's what you're talking There's about. They're such targets. I was, like just, in, I was just implying that reality in GTA 5, you see, it was, it was not a clever They are not blending a clever together joke, a little, little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It's all right. I got it. Thank we you, got Sims. it. I got it. You got it. So, yeah. but nobody, nobody enjoyed it. Like, that, that's the, the worst. It was, an internal, it was an internal satisfactory chuckle. Okay. The, I didn't the, project. If you make a joke that nobody gets. Don't worry, you can, right, but you can at least feel superior. But if you make a joke that people get and it's just not good, that's even worse than one that people don't get. If they get it and they're like, "Yeah, we we got it," you're like, "Oh shit!" I, well, you don't I, need I'm to draw attention podcast. to it by talking no, about it. No, I want to talk about like... it. I want to talk about my <laughs> failure, guys. Lewis. I want to talk about it. Oh, you want to address that? Don't worry, we're here for you. All Look, right. we we this is the case. You know, we always you know this is why they record QI and these panel shows for like three hours and then yeah, they yeah. cut it down to half an hour because not all of the jokes work and then I everyone know. laughs at the yeah. person who For, made the like terrible I've joke. I've made a couple of stinkers in my time that I'm not proud of. No. Well, know, we, it happens. Well, not just, they, they don't work. Anyway, we, we, I was looking at this exercise thing, right? And um, it reminded me of those things from the, the 50s when a woman had like a white strip the rubber strip that would go around their waist and it would jiggle them and they would stand there while that Yeah, yeah. That, that I can't thing remember what it was would, called. The, probably was, yeah. like the vibrating belt, the vibro belt. That's right. And it will, you know, watch the power Ripley's fantastical, amazing jiggler belt. The jiggle belt. <laughs> Just 10 minutes on the jiggle belt a day and you could lose this much weight. Look at our model here. She used the jiggle belt every day for only three weeks. And look, she's a supermodel now. Look at her perky tits. <laughs> you could have tits like this if you used the jiggle belt. And it's bollocks. But do you know, yeah. what, so there was the, a, do you know what they called what? that machine in the 50s? Have you found it? Yeah, the what's, vibrating what's belt machine. Like they, the vibrating they didn't understand how to, was... how to brand things in those days. No, they, they didn't. didn't. The yeah. vibrating didn't. belt machine. Okay. The gigolo. Yeah, the so gigolo. The, that's what they should have so, called it. So I saw the. Um, so they basically had one of them, but you stood on it and it jiggled you, and it was the dumbest shit ever. Yeah. Now uh, again, maybe. Maybe this thing is the next biggest thing, and maybe everyone's going to be watching TV in their lounge, like standing on the jiggle pla the jiggle platform. No, we've moved past pad. that though. Now we're already past the jiggle. Well, because we had the Wii exercise thing, and now it'll but be the HTC jiggle. Vive because it'll be like Game of Thrones HTC Vive edition. Now you can be Sir Jon Snow and wield whatever his stupid sword's name was and kill everybody in your living room. Yeah, oh, I'd play the hell out of that though. Yeah, that's what it'll be, and then it'll be a bunch of people who are like, "I did three hours of Sir John Snow battles the ice monsters last night, and I burnt off five hundred calories." And I can now have a that Snickers now, bar that I always I, wanted. Now I can award myself with my seventh can of Coke today. <laughs> yeah. and that's what it'll be like. Yeah. And then and then it'll die out instantly because nobody wants to fucking do that. Because, uh, again, people will just figure out some way to, like, lay on their couch and, like, twiddle a finger or something to make Sir Jon Snow do his, like, uppercut attack or whatever and chain uppercut attack their way through the game and then move on. I quite love the idea of, and this is, is this the thing with Dota that they were doing, P Flex with the Vive, where basically you can sit in like an arena of spectators mm. with other people and watch a game like on a big screen uh, Well, that, that was what, um, when when I was talking to them about it at TI5 and they were saying they were going to do the, the VR um, uh, spectating mode for Dota 2, they implied that you would be able to see your friends and you would be looking at the whole map. But instead, they, if you look at the release video for the Vive that was up the other day, they showed it and it's more like you're sitting there 
and you're looking at a virtual screen that's bigger than you know a screen you'd have in your house. So it's like a, a widescreen TV, like a big TV. And then you watch the game on that, and there's and then you look around you, and there's various assets like data. So you can look at stats, and you can look at this and the other, and you can look at chat and everything. So there's all kinds of add-ons around you that you wouldn't normally I have. I see. Um, so I think that's so rather what than just for. watching it on the screen, yeah. you have a three. You you can use your head to to provide you with more info. Right. Up above, it's like, oh, there's the net worth, and over on the right, it's like, oh, there's exactly. A picture and I, of get a cat, the, I get the know. appeal, but I don't want to be the guy sitting in the room, like Ray Charlesing it all over the place with my head, <laughs> this thing on, and like people walk in, like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, what's wrong with them? And I'm just like trying to watch a game of Dota. Like, it's embarrassing enough being caught playing video games anyway. It, it, it's, yeah. yeah, I guess it is a p- particularly bad when, especially if they walk in and you're playing like anime love uh, oh, sex. I was sex trying simulator. to get the achievement on GTA Five for going to the strip club like a hundred times or whatever, and like oftentimes I had to turn my TV off like if somebody came in the room because it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, you know? but, it's embarrassing. Yeah, Ms- and, Mrs. You know, F, if you've got uh, the groin attachment uh, on yeah. and you're you know <laughs> banging away yeah. on hentai tentacle, yeah, tentacle. Rape, sim 66 7 69 uh, x yeah. xxl yeah uh diamond edition diamond edition yeah with all of the dlc pokemon red i got yeah. yeah and uh and you know someone just films you yeah f- and puts it on the youtube yeah there was, there's a video of a guy having sex with a there's a new flashlight that you just strap on and it's, that's it, right. I saw that. Yeah, it's he, like a suit. Yeah, he's and like, it has like a full body suit. He's lying on the floor. It's got fake boobies. And I think the harder you massage you the boobies, to, yeah. the faster the flashlight goes. But does it matter what it looks like if you've got a mask? If you're if you're seeing it in virtual reality anyway, it yes. doesn't know that. And that's the thing. This guy's laying down with a, like a vive on, um, with like a you know like a climax face, just like fondling these big boobies and with his flashlight pounding away on his junk, and. Um, He's he's looking at anime, and it's like, well, that's great. You know, we've we finally we've arrived. <laughs> we've done it. <laughs> We're here all, in the twenty first century. All we need now is for your computer to emit smells. So, like, you know, for people who like to have like a little fart in their face or whatever. Yeah. Um, big and, and big in Brazil, we, that seems arrived. to be always, always. <laughs> it is, yeah. All we need, right, is a machine which will fart in your face. And, that is and, computer is and, farting again. Mm. And, and then we're basically at Star Trek. We're yeah. th- you know, we're, we're in the future there. Pretty much, yeah. Computer, yeah. computer, yeah. Earl Grey hot, and please fart in my face as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's a more computer, realistic Daddy version needs a puff of in what face. he would be doing in his spare time in the future, definitely. Yeah. He would go back to his cab, he would be thinking all day, oh God, I've spent the whole, the whole day exploring the galaxy, I really need someone to fart on my face. Quickly, back to my, I must go back to my cabin and sleep now. That was Picard's the like, cabin. thing though, wasn't it? Uh, it was like... Deanna Troy, please leave me alone in my quarters. I, uh, computer, computer, fart in my face. Fart in my face. <laughs> in three, two, one. I'm ready. I engage. need to go My, and, my uh, mouth is open. Engage. Engage, fart. <laughs> brown, brown alert. Ah. <laughs> brown alert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, the thing is, he was always like, "I need to go and practice that funny penny whistle that I've got." So, do you remember he had that little whistle? He was trying to play phrases. Like, oh, that was a really, a, really a good story, space though. Flute. Oh, right. space flute. But I think he, he would say, to the, "Like, if you hear strange tooting noises coming from <laughs> the, my ready room, <laughs> my quarters. it's the space flute. <laughs> it's the my space flute." Uh, but they could, they room. could totally prank other people on board. It's like, computer, please fart in Data's face. In three, two, one, five. <laughs> Captain, I am experiencing such a strange sensation. It's almost like disgust. That was so eggy. <laughs> my, my, my skin is going pruny, and I feel like maybe I'm about to die. <laughs> Computer, what have you been eating? <laughs> For goodness sake. <laughs> Oh, do you reckon because yeah. data because data could do that like if the captain said to him data i have a uh unusual request my farting machine is broken and uh daddy needs to <laughs> get his fart on so <laughs> if you could just <laughs> kneel on my desk i'll sit in my chair <laughs> and, uh, mr data <laughs> fart in my face <laughs> yeah you, you do that little head turn that he does i find this request unusual captain <laughs> I don't shut up, data. data. It's an order. Make with the farty fart data, Captain's orders. That, that's what would happen, I think. You will oh fart in my face, Data, or I will have to relieve you of duty. 
Now, Data, and we're then, not going to tell Worf about this, are we? Worf would, <laughs> would not like to hear that his captain is into farting. <laughs> oh, captain, God. I will not follow a fart lover into battle. Mm. Oh, my God. Worf Man, I love having that. next generation conversations because the, the thing that I do after every next generation conversation is watch those fucking edits on Oh, YouTube. they're, so, Man, they're good. so good. They're so good. They're so fucking funny. I was trying to put the baby to bed the other night whilst washing them and... And my wife got so mad. Like, you were what just the giggling fuck away. Are you doing? I was just like, you know, like when you're not supposed to be laughing, but you're laughing really fucking hard. Yeah. It was like that, like when you're at school. You're I'm laughing like and farting. And the baby's and laughing farting. and farting. Yeah. It's just pretty good. I, I get, just uh, I've, been, I've been playing Rust a lot, like I was saying to you guys before we started. And the problem is that that game makes me laugh way too much. So Mrs. F goes to bed about 10.30 and I'm up till one playing Rust and just laughing my ass off. And she keeps, like, th there's that moment. I'm playing, I'm like, tears, and I'm like, you know, tears on my face. I'm like, ah, smash his head with a rock. And I look to my right and the door's open and Mrs. F is there just scowling at me. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm that's sorry. Face, yeah. You know? And then it sucks all the joy yeah, out I'm of you, like, like, yeah. like some sort of energy vampire yeah. just comes in. It's like, <sighs> oh, no. It's, it's the worst. And you feel super guilty. Yeah, I've, I've been there oh, oh man who hasn't right who has from from like the ultimate happy high to like the the like suddenly crushing low the, the crushing. highs of video games to the the lows of married life that's that's uh, that yeah the two don't mix very well together nah. that's for sure she, it, I'll tell you um, what, if I, if I didn't make any money out of this whole shebang, then uh, she would have smashed my computer pieces long ago. Long, oh, same. long ago. I've, I've had threats and everything yeah. in the past. That, that's the but ultimate like argument, it, Sattler, actually. She'll say, I'll unplug the internet. And I'm like, okay, oh, whatever yeah. you want. And she's like, I'll take oh. your power cable away and I'll hide it. And I'm like, yeah. all right, yeah, whatever you, whatever you need. Just it's like I'll my fix mom. the solar panels, yeah. I promise. <laughs> Don't tomorrow. hurt the baby, please. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. That's what my mum used to do. Just you know, when I was a kid, she would. If I was playing games for too long, she'd just take take things, take take important cables away. Yeah. And I had to learn to like MacGyver my way back <laughs> to like get the computer working again without <laughs> without all of the relevant leads. You know, I, I, without a mouse, I learned to use like keyboard commands for everything. Wow. So I could just basically navigate my way through Windows and everything with, yeah, with only yeah, the keyboard. Important. You know. Because my mum didn't realise that if you if you went, you know, control escape, uh, P, like shortcutted your tab, 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 shortcut your way through everything, like yeah. find the EXE files to play like, you know, a game that doesn't require a mouse. Fucking Bobby Digital down there. Like, ha ha, who's going to have the last laugh today, mother? Ha ha ha, control P, escape. That's right, alt F4. <laughs> I'm in, I'm hacking DOS, mother. What do you think of this? Man, it was so satisfying to do that though. And it's a bit useful today because I know all of the keyboard commands. It's, it's good, yeah. It's it served nice me well. Keyboard Here's, by the way, sure. quick yeah. keyboard command tip for anybody out there. Control Shift T will open the most recent tab that you closed in Chrome. How about that? Very Whoa. helpful. So if someone comes in, you can quickly close that tab. And then control shift T. And then like, as soon as mother, they've gone yeah. again, control, you can control shift T. Control and shift T. Control shift okay, T. Okay, I'm going to throw caution to the wild. Right Let's back on see there. what opens up in mine, right. Lewis. If it is like midget filth or something, I apologize, but. It is disgusting. Oh my it's goodness. It's a Google pay search. My online. It's a pay my taxes online. It's a pay my taxes online tab. Okay. I'm a dad. I'll let you off. I'm a dad. I'll let you off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so well, we started talking about gaming um, and we didn't really mean to. You've been playing Rust. Do you want to talk about Rust a bit? I would love to talk about Rust. It is my new jam. I love this game. They, they've... It's pretty old jam. No, no, no. It's an old it, jam, it, Right, isn't it? but I, I played it at release and it was garbage. It had zombies and it was just terrible and it was a really stupid game. And the, the version that they've got now is amazing absolutely fucking amazing and i love there's it. lots of nudity in it now apparently there's always been nudity in it i know but and now it's very graphic like dongers and everything yeah they're, they're running around i mean it's quite funny if you're running after someone and they jump over a rock you get you get an unpleasant shot of their taint i'll tell you what it's like it's like it's realistic you know what i mean you're really having a yeah, pretty cool. look at a man's balls jiggling around while you're trying to kill him with a spear but it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant it's just so funny rust is one of those games i think where it, it it'll it'll benefit from having these sort of like um People picking it up again after a while, yeah, yeah. really enjoying the new features and then getting their friends back into it and stuff. And it'll probably sell uh, like more copies off the back of that. Maybe. But it does suffer from that thing where it was like, Rust came out like two years ago. It'll never have that big like 
we're releasing, you know, we're ready, we're yeah, done the yeah. game sort of thing. It'll never have that big release again where it could be popular. A little bit like Gary's mod, it will just continue to tick over. And that's the same, it's made yeah. by the same guys. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? And it, it, it is, it's yeah. kind of, you know, they do continue to update it and improve it. And it, st- it keeps doing well. It's a clever game. They, it's thoughtful. You know, they don't just throw it out there and, and, and make the cash and then make a new game and make the cash. You know, they do. It's, I like the, the, the way it has changed and evolved and become good you know because it was in the christmas it was in our first christmas bundle like a couple of years back right yeah and then it was in last year's bundle and i think i think it's been in the bundle for the last three years maybe in I, fact i Rust. played it when it was released and it had the zombies and actually i i liked it back then so i i'm probably oh, still dude, will like you'll it you'll love but it's, it you'll love it but you're a huge daisy fan anyway pflex right well so, I, I, mean, I am and i'm not i mean i i'll go back to it and i'll be all over it but then i'll remember the crushing lack of fun that there is for 99 percent of playing that game and yeah. then the absolutely petrifying moments of terror that are meant to be fun but in fact are not and the game is so buggy like rust you can get guns in Rust in a couple of hours, and that's good because you want to have fun. Like last night, I was playing it with Monticus, and <clears throat> all of a sudden, there's like 20 people in the Discord. And they're like, let's play, let's play, let's play. So we're all running around the island trying to meet up. Everyone's got their stupid stories of trouble they've had getting there. And then we met this guy who really knew what he was doing, and he was like, yep, yeah, I'll build a house. And I'm like, okay, let's get him some wood. We get a load of wood from him, and we're all going around as like 10 people harvesting wood. So we just like harvest the entire area around our house in like no time, come back, and he's built this mansion for us. And we've got little, we've, we've each got a box with a sign over it saying whose box it is. We've all got sleeping bags. We've got furnaces going. We've got like a production nice. team. We've got like a, a gathering team. We've got the combat team, and we keep getting attacked. These guys were attacking last night with rocket launchers. And then because we withstood them, I'd, I'd logged off. They waited till we logged off and then attacked with rockets. Didn't didn't manage to get inside, but they came and gave us a load of stuff because they were like, here, have some stuff. It's cool. And But we're still having a fight. So they'll attack in like twos and threes and we'll run out with spears and bows and arrows and like hunt them down. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. We've all got the same so, the same hat. So we know who's on whose side. But it, oh, it's, nice. it's just bedlam. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's just absolute Who, bedlam. Uh, how many people are per server now? Has that changed at well, all? Well, some of the servers, you can have like 300 people. Wow. So with the one we were on was slightly smaller. We went on. We were on Rustified Medium, which is about 180 people maximum. But that's a, okay. that's a lot of people. And it, every lot, yeah. week, the server completely wipes. So you forget everything. All Like you have to find blueprints and you remember the blueprints. And even if you die for the remainder of that server lifetime, which is about a week, you'll know how to make an AK or you'll know how to make wooden pants or whatever so nice. when they wipe you forget everything everybody starts from scratch because as the as the time goes on people have built these m- massive castles that are covered in barbed wire and bombs and you can't get in and they just snipe people from their sniper tower so once that all gets wiped everyone's back to the square one you have to you know it'll just be it'll be madness so that resets today and we're really looking forward to it but um that's cool. Yeah, that's that's that sounds. It pretty sounds funny. like we should join you. You, you yeah, 100% should. Yeah. should. It is yeah. the funniest It'll be great shit. I'm, I'm this. I'm not pimping my channel in any way, but I put out a Rust video a couple of days ago that was brilliant in my opinion. It was one of the funniest streams I've ever done, and I've got the second one it ready to render, and it was just as funny. It's just it's just so much stupid nice. shit happens. I and I'm very happy. Like it's the first. It's, it's the first great game when I played. You... Sorry, go ahead. No, it, it's great when you pick up a game and you, you genuinely just have a ton of fun yeah. with it, isn't it? Like, like so many games come out now and you think that like they're going to be fun or you're expecting to have fun playing them. But it, it's it's nice when something like genuinely delights you. Yeah, isn't it? like I, honestly, like I, I've streamed a ton of games and I made videos for a bunch of games. And sometimes the game's sort of OK or the content is all right. But this was just like this is one of the best streams that, that I've done, like in terms of how much I enjoyed it. I was just I was just yeah. I would for completely forgot what time it was. I was just like, oh shit, it's one a.m. Guys, I've got to stop. There's like six hours of streaming this game, just running around naked. Like when you throw a spear and catch someone in the back of the head and kill them, and then they're rolling around and they're going to ground, going ah, and you finish them off. <laughs> you finish them off with a rock, and then you harvest their body and eat their 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 flesh, and then you can you can make their bones into weapons and stuff. It's just it's insane. It's absolutely but insane. Can you can you eat their dead dicks? Because I would like to be known on a server as like. <laughs> Oh shit! It's the dead the dick d- eater. The dead dick eater. <laughs> Watch out, everybody! The dick eater is on the loose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna eat your dicks. I'm gonna eat your dicks. I'm gonna eat your dead dicks. Oh my 100%. god! 
yeah. same if you can. Yeah, yeah. That sounds so fucking bad. It's, it's yeah. amazing. It's just brilliant. I'd love that. But be, but oh, normally yeah. normally like the the bigger clans or whatever haven't got as many people as we have. Like everyone on the stream that's got the game that's a sub, we're just getting them in on the Discord and we're just running around as a pack. We're like right lads, raiding parties. Everybody arms up. We've all got random armor on. Like I've got armor that is made from a road sign, um, and I've got like Wellington boots on and uh, a hoodie and a, you can get a blue bucket hat with the with the front missing with so you can run around with a bucket on your head and we're all just run, awesome. running around like a bunch of mad max sort of cast offs uh looking for trouble it's incredible it's absolutely incredible Fuck, that sounds really fun it's actually. great i gotta pick that up you again. should yeah. you should it's completely it's changed it is a ton of we'll, we'll i, I immediately evening. thought we'll i immediately thought of how much you guys would enjoy it it is so much fun so what have you been playing this week, Sips? What have you been doing? Um, I started. It's a weird one. I was. I've been playing the new Orcs Must Die, which is a little bit. It's it's hit and miss with a lot of people. I, like if you played the original Orcs Must Die games, like like one and two, um, they were they were there was multiplayer in the second one, but but they were predominantly single player games um, and geared up around this like single player experience. You had these levels that you played, you put traps down, you killed lots of orcs, and you progressed through like a story and stuff. So what they've done with the game now is they've um, they've sort of kept some of that in in its own mode, but they've tried to introduce this. It's like almost like a like a MOBA mode. So it's like a five v five sort of. Um, it's like Smite. So like it, it's third person. It's 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 nice enough to look at. Graphics and stuff are pretty good. And the idea is that you um, you spawn minions, so you spawn your own orcs and ogres and whatever uh, from these portals, uh, and they work as your creeps. You you follow the waves of creeps up um, and and push on like the enemy's rift or whatever. You buff your creeps. There's all these like little mechanics thrown in and stuff. There's roles, so you can either choose to defend or attack, uh, or you know, there's like a almost like a jungling role, and it's 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 good. It's it, uh, I've enjoyed it. I've play, I've been playing it like most of the weekend, and then uh, a little bit this week, yeah. and it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I think a lot of people have been really dismissive of it, thinking that it's not like the original game, so it's going to be garbage. Mm-hmm. Free to play mobas are, are generally pretty hit and miss unless you're like playing the big ones or whatever and i i would say give it a chance i don't yeah. think it's a terrible game well, i don't think it's the best game either we uh, did but, a one shot right yeah on it me and you played it on the main channel and then we've done did a couple more videos on double dragon after that um i think as of this recording they haven't gone out yet but i think they're going out or i've been going out the last couple of days and so for me the game well i think the, one of the last things i said was it felt like felt that the team what they'd done is they said hey look we made orcs must die 2 it was good um let's make it into a moba because we can and i think i've got some really good ideas for it and then they did and then they thought well how are we going to release this it's now a moba what do we do we need to find a publisher who will publish it like a moba and that's what they did and so i think that they intended for it to be a moba and this fun thing and then they went down this slippery slope and before they knew it they were basically putting the whole league of legends interface in with yeah. all the free to play stuff all the hero picking and they thought well Look, we've we've tested this mode. We've made the mode. We've played the five v five. It doesn't quite work. What we're going to do? Okay, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make different roles, right? So we're going to have to have attackers, defenders, and basically junglers, right? So one person on each team of five is a League of Legends style jungler who literally spends his entire time fucking running around the map killing crates. Yeah, which is the worst role ever, God. by the way. It's so boring. Well, you you gank too, like ge- like generally but, but the guy I, I, who's jungling I, is a strong. A sort of a ganker. Right? That's yeah. true. So you, you if if you have a stealthy character while you're not collecting boxes you can be ganking yeah or you could like one-on-one people yeah. that you know one-on-one they're they're jungler there's like a thing. big there's there's neutral objectives so like sometimes certain maps they'll have like a place that you need to capture to spawn like a boss minion yeah and, and so, so for example have you like have to neutral... kill a big creature but because you're yeah. a jungler you've got a bit of life steal you can usually kill that thing on your own kind of thing and then it summons this big minion like here's the storm style it goes along your fucking creep wave and you know you push with it it's it, do you know what? I, I I I enjoyed it for a couple of games, and then like every MOBA, I found it quite repetitive, um, and I didn't really get any pleasure out of it. I guess I guess, but then again, I enjoyed it for a few hours. I, yeah. I guess I guess I'm not really happy to pay three hundred quid for a thirty quid game, or to spend one hundred and fifty hours in it to unlock everything. Because it felt like I played. I ended up playing about ten to fifteen games, and I'd unlocked fuck all. I think yeah. I maybe unlocked like one extra trap. And I thought like, I thought kind of, kind of fuck that. You know, if I've played this game for like hundreds of hours, 
you know, you know, well, not hundreds of hours, but but if I've played the game for like 20 hours, at least I should have been able to unlock one hero or one hero skin or something. But it felt like it felt like it was just really stingy. <laughs> but it's or maybe that's the current balance. It's a though. it's a hard sell for them to get somebody with 5,000 hours of Dota 2 and hundreds of pounds spent on cosmetics and chests and stuff to say, hey, you know, forget all that, you know, come and get involved in this game exclusively for like some time sort of thing. I don't think they're going to win anyone over with the game. I think people I speak to who are in League of Legends are very, very invested in the game. They put so yeah. many hundreds of pounds in the game that they're never leaving. Yeah. You know, that sunk costs fallacy thing means that they 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 feel like they, they would never want to start investing any, any money. Exactly. In the game. And it's I the think... same thing with World of Warcraft characters, right? Yeah. People have got so much investment in their World of Warcraft characters and their accounts and things. So one of the things in news I read today, unrelated, was that the classic server Server, the nostalgia server World of Warcraft Vanilla yeah. has been given a cease and desist order by Activision Blizzard and it's going to be shut down. Yeah. And this was a team that had worked very, very hard to replicate the vanilla experience. And a lot of the people in the thread who were talking about it, it was very, very sad that it got shut down. A lot of them were saying, I actually never started because I didn't want to get attached to a character and then have it ne- never be able to have, come back to it. So people do get very, very attached to their accounts, the characters. And I think when a new game comes along that you can't transfer across your stuff to, you know, it, it's one of the reasons that League of Legends has had such a longevity. It's because those people who got started in the beginning have put hundreds of pounds into the game. Because yeah. you do have to pay that to even fucking play the game. You, you know, don't. It, it means they never you, play. You can, you can play that game. There's nothing... There's nothing that you buy in that game that gives you an edge. It's well, all cosmetics. heroes though, having to pay for heroes. Yeah, but even then you can grind them up. Like, you know, if you're if you're willing to. It's like Heroes of the Storm. You can buy them straight up or you can grind them up. And I I I would say that most people probably grind them up because with a player base of like 30 million or whatever it is, you know, there's gonna be a lot of people in there with without disposable income. I will just say this, just... Sips. They do make a billion dollars a year. Yeah, they do, a but, I, game. but I don't think that that necessarily means everybody playing the game has to spend money on it. There's there's always going to be people who spend nothing. I, I, on I it think psychologically, and, and it's a very insidious business model, though, and it seems that free to play games have become this very. I think they're very. I think you know, League of Legends and Dota are the most expensive free to play games we've ever played. You know, we we end up spending hundreds of pounds more than we would have done for buying a full price game. Yeah. And I think that I think that it is a very a very cynical business model that, that that's been ad- adopted by so many people because it makes so much money yeah candy crush all these free-to-play ios games that you know have in-app purchases which are just you end up spending so much you, it gets out of control it's it's psychologically quite sneaky and i i think yeah and the it's way it makes to, you spend it, money it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking like i'm just gonna buy this one thing because you know like i've played enough this game now you know i want to get something and yeah before you know it it's like do all those justifications are fine people justify it they say oh you know i've got a lot of fun out this game i don't mind putting 20 quid in i don't mind putting 30 quid in yeah but it ends up being a lot more than that i think like when you look at the amount of money i've spent on let's say hearthstone versus world of warcraft right i have i spend fucking like 60 70 quid on packs every expansion on hearthstone yeah. you know i've probably spent more money on hearthstone than i've ever spent in 10 years of world of warcraft subscription and that's you know a long lot of fucking money but even world of warcraft's got cosmetics and stuff that you can buy like now you can even buy all the old transmogs you know like you can buy like the flaming crown i mean the cash shop in world of warcraft stuff. was only a matter of time because Pet all shop, the other mmos yeah, mounts. have kind of taken that on as their entire business. I, also, I mean, I also I think know. like companies want to move away from that subscription model because for some reason people would rather have that choice even if they end up spending more. And I, I honestly think if you're calling it a sort of deceptive or like it's tricky the scri- or The subscription or model is dead, or whatever, really. Right, but that's the thing. If, if, if a new game came along uh, ju- that said, we're, we're going to be the next World of Warcraft, it's a subscription model. People would say, oh, no way. Well, no, but it's been tried and tested and failed and yeah, failed, yeah. though. You know, but that's yeah. why they the fact have is that this, World of Warcraft uh, was subscription and will always be subscription it, yeah, because exactly. they can get away with it, right? They can, yeah. Because people have got that investment in their account, right? Right. You know, it, it's not going away. It's a bit that's crazy how it to was think, when it started. Though, that it's subscription based plus you have to pay for the expansions. Yeah, like, that is and the expansions, crazy. There's enough value. You get enough value from it as if it was a full game. Because the, they, the expansions they, are big. They charge it because they can charge it. Yeah, that's it. You know, and it's their business model. It's always been there. They were the first. They're going to, they're, they're, that's just how it is. I think that when yeah. you're having to compete with something which is that, you have to give a, but you have to offer better. I think, you know, when you look at things like Guild Wars 2 or recently the Black Desert Online, Ugh. which sold, I think, 400,000 
copies in its first month, uh, which is a lot. So it's a it's a Korean MMO. I haven't played it. I, I've heard a lot of people talking about it and saying, hey, you should play this. Uh, it sold 400,000 copies in the West, but it's a one-time purchase, right? So no subscription. I'm assuming there's probably like in-app shit or free-to-play probably, bollocks yeah. in there. But uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, you buy the game one time, you get the game. Uh, I, I think that a lot of people these days are, are surprisingly unwilling to even pay that 40 quid up front in the first I, I place. I got though. it. You know, this I is what we're talking it, about here. And I played it for you know, five minutes, Lewis. Exactly. And so you, I mean, so you really have had a, really a bad experience it? there by buying a game outright. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So would that be better if it was free to play? Because, you know, you you maybe their model is, is the better one for them because they know that it's a shitty game that no one's going to buy anything free to play in because they're going to quit it after five minutes. But, no, but I so quit they think, it. oh, well, I let's just get because, the 40 quid right, up front. And if you look at the European website for Black Desert, it doesn't have anime on it that I could see. I just looked at it and I thought, right, wow, this right. is good. And people said Black Desert is good. I was like, oh, cool. So I looked at the thing. I was like, oh, that looks pretty good. Anime in my game. <laughs> Surprise anime. It, this anime. I was appalled. I was looking at the character and I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. This is looking a little uh, anime. I was like, maybe it's not too anime once you get into the game. Maybe it's just a couple of the character okay. moves. Yeah. And then it's just full you anime. Like, Rainbows this and fucking weird ponies out of the field. Spirit. It's like, oh, it's about to do. I was like, oh my God, it's full on anime. And it's just, it's incredibly complicated. I open up the, mo- the menu. There's like a billion buttons. I was like, right, fuck this. Just write it off. 40 quid wasted. I can live with it. It's Steam refunds? No, I, you, yeah, I didn't Steam get it refunds. through Steam. I bought it through their oh, cocking website. Man, he, Steam refunds is something you hear a lot. I have Steam refunded yeah, a lot of shit lately. Like, Fuck and, me. I love, I love Steam refunding games. It's kind of like... It's kind of like rage uninstalling. It's, it's like your really own personal fuck you to a, it is, it's a game great. Dev, It's like, hey, it? you Asshole. made a shitty game and yeah. you think you screwed me over? Fuck you. <laughs> I played your game for 20 minutes. I had an okay time, but I'm going to refund it. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, I did that with so uh, nice. Rainbow Siege 6 or whatever it is. 30 minutes. 30 minutes Tom, I've Tom played Clancy's. that game for, yeah. Hey, uh, you played The Division too, didn't you, period? Yeah, Because yeah. we have two weeks of games to catch up we on. Do. And what did you think? I got to level 28. Um, I've finished the single-player content uh, like of the main story. Um, and I was about to venture into the dark zone. Um, but you can't go into the dark zone alone once you get to a certain level. Yeah. Um, when you're low level, you can sort of dance in and out, grab a few guns and hop out. But once you get to the later stages, you better be yeah. piled up because it is hardcore in there. It's ridiculous. There's a PC Gamer article about the Dark Zone um, claiming that it was both um, broken and beautiful at the same time. I agree so with what, that. So it's a yeah. PvP area <laughs> yeah. with free, free, free killing? Well, no, 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 because it, it's actually what? quite clever what they've done. I, ha- I haven't seen this. Um, I, ha- I haven't seen this before. It's been in other games. I haven't seen it. So you're all meant to be division agents, right? You're all technically on the same side. But when you... So, okay, yeah. for people who've never played Division like me, who have no fucking clue what it is, okay. is yeah. it like, is you're it like, like Borderlands? You're no, like no, no, no. sleeper agent yeah. sort of thing. So you're, you're like, you're, 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 you're like a dad in his jeans sitting down for dinner with your family and like the worst thing possible happens to New York City and then they awaken like these these dormant agents to to save the day sort of thing. So it's like, yeah. we don't get attached to anything. You know, we leave everything right away so that we can save New York City. So there's like this big fucking like bio... Yeah, there's been like a virus. Some guys developed a virus. Yeah. They put it on money. Yeah. And of course, everybody's hand in money all day. So you, they all get the virus. A ton of people die. And New York is then yeah. overrun by these gangs. And you got to try and figure out what's behind that. I'm not going to give away the story. Yeah. Like, it's not a particularly so, 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 original so story. So what game, what game is it most similar to? It's a cover shooter. Tom, so some, some people have said Gears Tom of War. Tom Clancy's X. Yeah. Some people right, say Gears okay. of War because it's basically a cover shooter. So you're running around. It's the, the yeah. you, like you have to shoot the enemies quite a bit. But it, it ended up it's not first bothering person? me. No, 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 it's third person. No. Third person. Yeah. So you're right. running around, it's... hiding behind cars. You've got a variety of technological gadgets to bail you out, like a little turret that you can deploy. You can deploy a little cover if you need cover. Um, so and stuff like t- that. So you level up, and it's like an RPG. You collect guns. It's mainly I guess. Yeah. Loot, loot a loot Yeah, yeah. So you get your guns. Yeah. You mod them. You get upgrades. You get armor. So and it's stuff. like World of Warcraft, but with guns. You get different purples. cosmetic things as well. Yeah. So you get like better toques. And exactly. Like, and is it all More sort of jeans. solo leveling, single player story no, no, type no. content you like can, World of Warcraft or what? You can party up for it. You can go in a group. I, yeah. I didn't have to. Like if you just you do them on, on normal, I did them all on normal difficulty. But is it, like a, is it like a world, like a big MMO world where you wander around and there's people doing the same quests as you? No. It's like lots of guy down the street. stuff. No. So like yeah. 
like if you go into a safe house or like in in your base or whatever you'll you'll bump into other players but then when you exit out it, you're you're like in an instance yeah. like a group your your single like player your instance is, instance is just you and but if you so you it, can you can solo the whole way up yeah, yeah. never never really see yeah, another yeah. person until th- a lot this, of people say that it's it, it's a very fun game when you play it with friends so if you have a couple of people that are willing to to do it right with you then it's a, a pretty enjoyable game solo experience i don't think is too bad i played it up to level 15 or so i think right. solo and i enjoyed it enough but I, I thought it was pretty good i loved um the look of new york city yeah stuff it was, the game it's, blew it, me the away. game looks Fuck, beautiful and the, the detail yeah. that they've got in the environment is is remarkable it's unreal yeah it really it must have just taken them so fucking long to do yeah like it's nuts Really like good. even just you, you go into an office like some of the you can sort of harvest gear so you go into like a, a shop and you can find fabric to help you craft items and stuff so you go into the shop and it just it it's so much detail it's it's, it's just GTA unbelievable. Five, like you know you go into some a house that you can go into and it looks like yeah it looks like, like somebody's house, house. Shit you can and, you can yeah, the reangle awesome. of it there's the kitchen there's the bathroom and it all looks a hundred percent like beautiful it really is a gorgeous so how much game. gameplay is there to level 28 like the end of the story I, is that I like goofed 12 around hours quite a bit. i think i got about 60 or 70 hours out of it i played it quite a bit um jesus it's, yeah yeah and then there's expansions there's two expansions coming out this year for yeah, it as yeah. well so more more story content and stuff and probably changes to the dark zone or whatever so it's a game that'll just keep yeah sort of but so, so that seems like a, but so a with, with the dark zone you go in um, and you can party up and you can get into a group and stuff. But let's say I see another agent. Because in the dark zone, the whole trip, the whole point is you lose your communication with the central agency. So you're pretty much on you're your right. own. So people can go rogue. If you go rogue and kill another division agent, you get a red skull over you for like three minutes or something. And okay. everybody in the area can see you on their minimap as a red skull. So they all hunt you. If they kill you, they get a bounty. They And also, if you die in the zone, you drop everything you're carrying. And people can loot your the public items that you drop from your body. So if you've got some amazing gear, you then want to get out of the zone. But here's the catch. You can't just dip in, grab the gear, and run out. You have to go to a, a pickup zone, and you have to stand there. You fire a fucking flare into the air, and a helicopter's like, we'll be there in one minute. So you have to stay in this area for one minute. And everybody on the map can see pickup zone activated on their mini map. So they all come over to kill you and steal your gear and you have to wait. Oh, and then man. the rope comes down. You've got to walk into the middle of the road, tie your shit to the rope. And there's NPCs attacking as well. It's really, it's so hard to get gear out of the zone. That sounds cool though. Like it sounds, it, it, it sounds fun, but a bit chaotic and stuff. It but is I chaotic. I can see the yeah. appeal. Like, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. So, so the division is the AAA game that came out before dark souls 3 which none of us have played no i don't think too hard too <laughs> or, too hard do we, do we plan on playing it i don't plan on playing i, I it. do not I plan on playing it at all we might double dragon it at the, some point well but. i mean the pc gamer gave it like 94 yeah you see that and they said it was a real triumph and i mean that i mean <sighs> dark souls there's always been a lot of love dark, for dark souls, souls had so. kind of a cult or following right a cult following of people and Dark Souls 2 had another cult following of people and I, I played the original and I played a little bit of Dark Souls 2 and I mean it really I really understood that whole idea that you you get so frustrated you smash your controller on the floor because that's what I was doing I was chucking my controller like on the floor after I played it and I was like how, why, why, how is this make how is this game making me so angry yeah I don't get it you know yeah. and so I think it might be something that we can we can look at but man it's supposed to be a good balance of extreme difficulty and fairly de- half decent storyline in Dark Souls 3 so yeah. at least this is what I'm hearing I, yeah I've, I've, it's, I've it's found meant it, to be good Dark Souls 2 the environment and everything is so oppressive and sort of de- yeah. depressing and it's just well you're like undead right yeah, so it's you're, just, I just you're, couldn't you're going through it. this weird fucking yeah I know I was, I, like, I was oh. the same I didn't I couldn't like gel with it. It was like a bit too dark for me, but like not, but not in like, not cause like I'm a pussy or whatever, but I just like, I don't know. It's like, it's too unforgiving, yeah, you know, yeah. like it, you, you can just screw up so easily and then you have to retry mm. stuff and whatever. And I'm, I'm up for I'm, that. I'm, I liked like Hotline Miami and stuff like that, which is, I guess, yeah, kind of yeah. similar. But that's instant, yeah. like restart, restart, restart. And that's quick. Yeah. It's so fast yeah. and punchy that like you get through it and it's, you know the pacing is 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 a bit better, I think. But I don't know. Maybe I just need to give Dark Souls like a good, a good try or something. And 
I just, yeah, we'll see. It's the yeah. loss. It's the fact that you die and that's it. Like, I, I, you know, you've got to go back to some miles away save point. You're like, oh, my God, I've got to grind my way through that guy and this bit and run all the way over here. Yeah. And it's just like, I just, yeah. I just can't do that. Like, that, I did that. You know, I'm 40. I played through the generation of games that people are like, you know what, oh, it really harks back to the days when games were hard. Yeah, I, I've done my yeah, time, all right? I've done But it's the same thing with Super Mario Maker, I don't need right? to do it again. We've, we've been playing Super Mario Maker this week, haven't we, a lot? Um, yeah. Because you've been making levels on it and your kids have been playing it. Yeah. It's a hard game if you pick a level that you're going to take 50 times to like try and complete. You know, yeah. it's, it's, I don't think it's that different to Dark Souls in a way. Like, you know, when you go through a Mario Maker level and you get right to the end and you die... You die and you think, shit, I'm going to have to start. I'm going to have to go through this bit again. I'm going to have to do this I know. thing again. I mean, the Mario Maker is like Happy Wheels, isn't it? Where it's all user generated content, right? Mm. So, like, you're at the mercy of somebody who has figured out that it's impossible to, like, get past the pipe with the flower that comes out with the spike trap right next to it and sort of thing and, and the ghost you and have the bomb a, bomb one percent like f- chance to get lucky and get through it and, and then, then you, you finally get through further. it and there's like a troll block above you yeah, that yeah. like knocks you into the hole and yeah, you're like yeah. fuck yeah it's fun though it's really fun and and really innocent too because mario right there's nothing like yeah. oppressive or, yeah. or offensive but you like it. that right you like the challenge you know yeah. it's, it's not like we are a four-year-old who 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 has one go and is I'm done. I yeah. mean, we're coming back round to this whole like thing, you know, but it's, it's uh, we're going full circle in this podcast, I think. It's nice. But I think with Dark nice, Souls yeah. 3, maybe, you know, maybe it's time for us to try it. So we'll see. Maybe it we'll is. Just see. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Um, game stuff, Lewis, do you have anything? Have you been playing anything interesting other than Binding of Isaac and the occasional game of Dota 2? Uh, no, I've been playing a lot of Binding of Isaac this week. I've enjoy, I'm enjoying it. I'm doing like the daily challenge. Niles Z is so good at it that I look on the daily challenge thing for where he is after I've finished because he usually does the daily challenge as well. And sometimes Rhythian does as well. And he always comes like top 1,000 or something in the world. Wow. And I am like, I'm like, like 20, 20,000, 25,000. Well, he's been playing it consistently for like, but I think now. I do a really good job. You know, I complete the daily challenge. So I, you spawn, you well, know, I complete it. obviously not good it, enough. But I'm nowhere near good enough, no. Jeez. I watched him stream it a bit and it, it it was like pretty, it was like a different world, really. He was just much more adept, much more capable than me, much more comfortable with the controls. I feel like I would like to try that game too. But man, I, I, I have enjoyed it. It's like an old, it feels old school. It feels hard. It feels like a bullet hell in many ways because a lot of the time you're dodging bullets and stuff. It's got a lot of little games within a game. It's RPG. Nice. It's collecting cool items. It's like finding the most broken combos. It's It's got so many games in one. It's a little bit of a bullet hell. It's a little bit of a sh- shooter. Cool. It's, man, Bind of Isaac is great. And they continue, I, I read yesterday they're adding like 50 more items and Edmund uh, McMillan posted, or is that his name, I think, posted a, th- a Reddit thread where... 10 of the users submitted ideas are going to go in. So a lot of people were suggesting loads and loads of dumb shit, which some of it was really, really cool as well. Cool. Um, so yeah, I saw I saw some really cool stuff and I upvoted a few of them. But it's, it's, a, it's a contest thread on Reddit. So when you go to a contest thread, right, all the responses in there are randomized and displayed to you in a random order with no yeah, knowledge yeah, yeah. of which ones are good and bad, right? Yeah. So the first one I was presented with was just cancer. And then like it, I, I scrolled down. Actually, cancer is a really good item in in Binding of Isaac, by the way. But <laughs> <laughs> nice. There's actually two items called cancer because one of them's the uh, star sign. Oh, anyway, yeah. uh, so you scroll down, blah blah blah, and I found a couple of good ones and upvoted them and stuff. But yeah, man, it was it was really it's nice to see games that are out. You know, you buy them. I think I got it on st- on the Christmas sale for like fucking nothing. Um, I play it a bunch. The free updates, man, it's a pleasure. And do you know what? I might I might like you know I might well buy. Um, some merch or something, some Binding of Isaac stuff, and, and pay some money because I because I love the game so much, and I feel like I want to give back. Who knows? Mm. Nice. Um, Who uh, wants to give back? The yeah. other thing I saw that come out this week was Enter the Gungeon. Mm. Have you heard of that? Yeah, uh, I've heard of seen that. Seen a yeah. lot of hoo-ha so, about it. It's a little yeah. bit like Binding of Isaac, just without any of the. It's not really fleshed out enough yet. Like, there's only it, one of the great things about Binding of Isaac is that there's so many different items and so many different bosses. You know, there's like thousands of items and, and hundreds of different bosses that can spawn. That every time you play, you're, you're going to get a completely different experience. Um, whereas Enter the Gungeon, I think, is a little bit basic at the moment. I think it's like it's like Binding of Isaac, except there's only like five or six floors. Um, there's only like three or four bosses that it can possibly be on each floor, and I think there's a limited amount of items. But it's kind of the game where you're shooting your way through anthropomorphic bullets it's a bit weird yeah 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 um but uh, yeah i haven't checked it out yet i'm gonna hopefully check it out and um maybe we'll do a one shot on it because 
Yeah. Man, I've been playing Bio the Isaac a lot and I, I love I love yeah, that kind that. of genre of game right now. Yeah, for that. So yeah, we'll 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 we'll, ch- we'll check that out maybe. Hey, um another thing today they announced uh, BlizzCon officially. Did they? Fourth and who's 5th playing November. at the uh, I don't who's know. Playing. Tickets are they've announced it anyway. Tickets probably haven't. They gone always on sale get just someone yet. quirky. I mean, Foo Fighters, Tenacious D, Metallica. Metallica. Wow. Who do you think it's gonna be? Who, who do you think it's gonna be this time? This year, I think it's gonna be Taylor Swift. It could be someone like I don't know. It could be someone like Green Day or someone like that. You know, it's, it feels Day. like those kind of. Do you know Green what I mean? Day. Those sort of people. Who like was it Sun last 41. year? I don't. I don't remember. I didn't watch or, like, um, or, or go. I can't remember who it was last year either. But if someone, someone quirky. Weird Al. Weird Al, that would be great. I'd fucking Weird love Al that. Weird Al would be sweet, actually. Holy shit, that'd be fantastic. But yeah, so if you like BlizzCon, you want to go to BlizzCon. The we're Warcraft going. movie. I think we're going. Oh, we can we're talk pretty about much going, stuff. aren't we? We're definitely going to BlizzCon this year. Yeah. yeah. You want to go, Flax? No? Um, BlizzCon? Where is it? Should it come? Uh, it is in Anaheim, Anaheim California. Um, when, when is it? When is the date? The 4th and the 5th of November? Oh. It's like a Friday and a Saturday. I, I've never been. I don't really play many Blizzard games. Um, yeah. I w- you should come. I would, I would go, but yeah, maybe. Yeah. Lots of cosplay. Lots of um, Co- lots cosplay of, for lots of characters panels. I don't know and games I don't really play much. And lots of panels. So we'll you bring you along. All if, the um, hot sizzling. If you're free. I would come just yeah. just for the crack. Honestly, it sounds like a good lot. Oh, it's fun. It's a good. It's a do good a lot trip. of crack there. Yeah. It's a it's a lot of crack to be done. Sweet. And uh, but it's like a ten hour flight. No, that's all right. I've been to California a bunch of times. It's, I, I like yeah, it. It's a nice place to be in November because it's warm. It's good. We're oh, going to Vegas is, yeah. afterwards as well. We're going to Vegas afterwards. Oh, shit, son. It's yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, I'm down for that. It's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be like a bachelor party. Oh. Nobody's, yeah, that's right. Prostitutes. Yeah. I'll, funny, get, I'll get divorced just so we can do it as a bachelor buys. party. How about that? Oh, yeah. you're the That'd man. That'd be sweet. Awesome. All right. Well, let's end the podcast. Oh, no, we have to do questions. So we um, have a couple of quick questions and then we'll uh, end. Fans. First one, Ryan James Benstead asks, uh, all of us, I guess, any advice for someone just graduating high school going into university? Well, I assume he's already picked his course and I guess has so. already been accepted into yeah, his choice like of course. It. So we're not going to talk about choosing a course. But yeah. uh, going into uni, just don't be a shut-in, right? Get yeah, out there. Get out there. Go Ch- clubbing. No, 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 no. Well, don't go clubbing um, necessarily, but join clubs, right? So one yeah. of the first things that they Get usually have a is a big, house. a big university open one. day thing, right? Where they, they have all the clubs that you can join and stuff. So you should go to, along to that and like sign up to all sorts of fun clubs that don't you do think that are interesting. Shit. Yeah, what the hell are you talking about? That. Get in well, with the cool frat house and um, do a toga party and have a couple of raves or whatever. Here's, it, here's what you do, is. kids, all right? If you go to university, don't don't stress about it. All right. Don't don't no. stress about it. Your life is not going to be decided by how well you do at university. There are tons of people out there with amazing qualifications that can't do shit, and there are there are lots of other people with shit qualifications that do amazing. So don't feel like yeah. every S is oh my god, I got fifty eight percent. My mom's gonna kill me. Just chill, enjoy yourself. Get have a load of protected your sex. Mom, get drunk. Do yeah, drugs. your mom doesn't give a fuck at that point. Like you're not going to go back and live with your mom after university because like you've already had a taste of what it's like living yeah. away from your mom. So who fucking cares? And trust your me, your parents your are having the time of their life once you get out there. Yeah, you're, you're, absolutely. They're like, holy shit! Look at the space we've got. The house doesn't smell of masturbating kids anymore. This is amazing. Uh, the kids are out. Yeah. It doesn't smell of teenagers. It's perfect. Perfect. And yeah. they go on holiday and they can do whatever they want. They get up at like midday they're walking around the house it's not, naked yeah. it's you guys dream. are right it's it's not about um the, the marks and the grades and the experience the course at all it's about who about meeting people yeah and you know setting yourself up setting yourself try up. to meet somebody who is the son of somebody really wealthy <laughs> yeah and then you're you're, you're gonna be good. you're sorted for life then. my my number one advice for this is that um when you go to like college or university or whatever um Lectures are optional. Like yeah, you don't have to yeah. go to those. They're so fucking boring. Like it, even if you want to do really well, you can just catch up by reading like the course material last minute and then just winging. I, I, I think the most important thing yeah. is figure out which lectures are for the hardest subjects and hit those lectures hard. You've got the the, yeah. the tough ones. You've got to go to because the notes will be yeah. like, "What the fuck does this mean?" You've got to go to Become the, go to yeah. the hard ones with a guy who has really neat handwriting. Yeah, not a girl. Uh, a guy who has really neat hand because you want to stay friends with him, right? Make sure you stay friends with him all, all the way throughout the course. And then just say, can I borrow your notes one day? Photocopy them. Job done. Wow. Yeah. And also, um, 
you know, one day if you wake up and you're like, I want to stay home and I want to play Counter Strike instead of going to school, do it. Just do it. Half Life came out Trust when me. I was at university and I missed a full week just playing Half Life. Yeah. It was incredible. Counter Strike 1.6 was my. Uh, we didn't have internet. Schooling. We didn't have internet at home in those days. I'm not so, sure a lot of this advice is particularly good, but games. thanks anyway. Yeah. Next question. Uh, next one is from Gamma Zana. Mm. Um, mm. And um, he or she asks, what are your thoughts on games having separate servers that, but no way to access them on clients? Say like um, a server having like an NA server and then an EU server, so it like segregates people out by by region. Like sort Starcraft of thing. did that. Yeah, yeah. Well, and um, you know, like most Blizzard games do that. You know, you can either play on NA or EU or. or well, Asia the main reasons is that you don't want people exploiting lag and stuff. You don't want. Yeah. You don't want to play on a server where half the people on that server are fucking lagging all over the place. Yeah, that's it. If they're like, play... oh, you know, I wanted to play with my friends in America, but I got stuck here and now I'm here. I just don't want a laggy server, and they all have a bad experience too, right? I think it's it's to prevent like players having a bad experience by picking servers that they shouldn't be picking. Yeah, and with having loads of lag. And whatever, so yeah. so they don't want their forums constantly be like, wah, 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 this game's so laggy. It's like, well, maybe you shouldn't have picked this fucking wrong server, you idiot. I played uh, Warlords of Draenor when it came out on the American servers because just the timing and when I was able to play, um, it meant that there were no queues to get on and I wanted to play. Um, but if I wanted to play on the e EU servers, there was just queues for hours. I couldn't get on. And the experience is definitely different. Like my ping was like, 170 or something to the NA servers and noticeably things weren't like always super responsive and stuff and if you play on EU when your ping's like 30 or whatever um it's it's a it's a lot it's a lot nicer experience so I guess that's why they do it but it sucks because you know the internet being the way that it is you, you, you will have people you want to play with who live in America you should be able to like opt in though yeah. there should be an opt in thing where you where it's, it warns you it says your game experience will not be optimal on these servers but you can access them if you want yeah. you know you, so you should be able to there should be things, at least something but... that says you can transfer your account information over to like another region in the same game like i would have wanted to play my eu characters on north american yeah. servers yeah imagine you, you moved abroad yeah. You know, there should be an option for that, but but yeah, who cares? It's just something we can't get around, I'm afraid. Yeah, I think it's just the way that they get it set up and whatever. Next question. It kind of sucks, but you got to deal with it. Uh, next question is from Hollow, somebody named Hollow. Um, and the question is, what's something you've always wanted to get better at? I guess like for Pyrian and Lewis, it's Dota 2. No, uh, I've had years. I don't really care that if I I'm get there. better at that. Yeah, we, can't, we can't get better. Yeah. Well, what, what, what's, what's something you've always wanted to get better at, PFLEX? I'm great at everything. I've always wanted to get better at just um, cooking, I think. I'd like to be a better cook. I, might, I wish I, I had a better, better memory. To do that. Better memory. That would be something. More and m Being more thoughtful. Like, I, I don't, like, for instance, my brother-in-law bought me a birthday present, and it was really thoughtful, and I've never bought him shit. Like, Mrs. F always gets it and posts it. And I kind of feel bad that I, I lack thoughtfulness. I don't. I don't do thoughtful things that people are like. Oh, what a nice thought! Because I'm just away with. Yeah. I'm away in my own mind most of the time. Mm. Okay. For me, I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. <laughs> I wish I owned my own fishing trawler. Um, <laughs> but some things you just can't change in life. So you just gotta, you know, take it on the chin and just, you know, power through it. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. Um, but if honestly, if I wanted to be better at something, I think it would be probably something like like an esport. I wish I was better at like Dota two or or something that I could just like go in and rinse noobs like whenever I wanted to. But I can't. Yeah, so the problem with that is that it. those people who are good at esports they never play anything else at all. So yeah, we've had it, a yeah. much more rounded and variety based experience with gaming. We've played everything from. Yeah. From strategy games to fucking RPGs to D and D yeah. to story shit to point and clicks to fat Candy Crush, play fucking everything. Yeah. Esports people play one game from when they're twelve to when they're twenty two. Yeah. That's it. They've that's played it. ten years of that, and that's what yeah. we were like in Modern Warfare. We were the best raiding team in the world, or at least the top <laughs> couple of hundred. You know, we were <laughs> very high level. It's a, it's a legend in his own lunchtime. We were pretty. We were, we felt pretty. We were pretty big in our little world, in our little sure. pool back yeah. in the day. Yeah. But, you know, that's because we invested the time in it. I think that's what you have to do with everything, right? That's true, yeah. Yeah. All right, last question before we round off then uh, from Alexander. Alexander asks, why did you three decide to start making a podcast? Um, 
I don't know. We wanted to do something together, I guess. And podcasts seem like the natural thing. It's like something you can meet up and do once a week. Yeah, yeah. It's just chill. It's, we don't have. We, the, yeah, the, it's there's it's, there's yeah. not a huge amount of like the editing. Or we've got to figure out which game, and you know, yeah. it's just kind of like we have shit to talk about. Yeah, and yeah. we don't really want to try and talk about that that shit with the while we're trying to play some stupid game. Because when we're playing some stupid game, we're too busy playing the stupid games to yeah. talk about the boring ass shit that happens in our everyday lives. And yeah. so yeah, I, I felt like. We always, you know, sometimes I come onto P Flax's stream and I, I just tell him about stuff that's happened in the week. I'm not, I'm not able to do that so much these days, and so yeah. this is kind of a place to just vent some of the the stuff that w- we've been doing. A give you of, a little bit of a behind the scenes. Yeah, look I think into a lot of people lives. assume that, like, you know, like last week when we didn't record, that a lot of people assume because we're all part of the Yogs cast that it's like a Yogs cast thing, and it's like, well. People actually busy, couldn't make it. Why not just get somebody else? But like the point of it was that it was us three doing it. We have like a, di- a certain dynamic, you know, we have certain things that we like to talk about or do or whatever. And we want to keep it like that. Yeah. We don't want to just backfill all the time with like other people because it, you know, it's, it's different. And it's, you know, for people who watch it for what it is, you know, maybe they don't want, you know, they want the consistency. Maybe they don't want things changing all the time and stuff like that. So yeah. Look, this is how we like it at the moment. It might well change. It might, you know, PFLEX and us might go away for three weeks. There might be no podcast for three weeks. Don't be mad. Yeah. Right? You know, we might get, don't don't get, get mad. Get, get even. even. Get e- yeah. Make your own get podcast. Even. That's slagging right. us off. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We, yeah. we might not, we might even get bored of Do doing a this entirely. Do a retaliation podcast. <laughs> you know, who knows? I might go back to streaming with PFLEX more and, and this might, might all change or who knows? Yeah. So, you but know, times now. change. Our, our fickle nature's change. But for now, this is what you got. So, yeah. Hope you Suck enjoy it. Up, it. Nerds. Hope you love it. Yeah. Hope you love it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. It's a pleasure to share this with you. And I'm glad if you've managed to stick it out. All the way through, um, <laughs> yeah. especially with all these audio weird You're like troubles. Like a real we're commando. Have. Yeah. Me and I've been talking to the back of Sips's head this whole time. <laughs> yeah, I don't very, made eye contact. With very nice. You once. had a haircut yesterday. I did. Yeah, it looks great. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. really suits you. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, I think, uh, I think all. So, somebody's got an garage. afternoon. Uh, the afternoon planned out ahead. You too. Yeah. I yeah. Know. Jeez. All right. We're gonna play. I just remembered. I'm really busy this afternoon. Enter the, the gun. Can we play Enter the Gungeon? I really want to play that. Sure. We'll, yeah. we'll have a go. All yeah. right. P Flex. Lots of love. A pleasure see you to talk next to you, week, chaps. friend. Yeah. See you next week. A pleasure. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Peace out. Everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Lots of love to you all. <laughs>